Today, we're going to talk about the first official collaboration between Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons in the new set, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Way back in 1973, a man called Gary Gygax and um, Don K, they got together to form TSR, Tactical Studies Rules. TSR and, you know, when I was growing up, it was one of the biggest gaming companies out there. They had everything and best of all, they had my favorite game. And as you can tell, I have... Uh, bit of a liking for Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, it is my favorite game of all time. I love almost everything Dungeons and Dragons and that's the thing, TSR and Dungeons and Dragons are so big and they did so many things. So this was my first one, the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons set and that's when TSR started to do a lot of other things. They um, branched out from the role playing game to, being, to things like Dragon Dice and um, you know, other forms, they had different rule sets that came out, and of course, they had their books. And with their books, they had their worlds. Uh, my favorite world is Dragonlance, but the most popular by far is the Forgotten Realms, which brings us to the collaboration between Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you know, when you take a look at it, this isn't a new idea. TSR thought about it first, well, not quite. TSR thought about it, about releasing a Dungeons and Dragons card game because Magic the Gathering uh, by Richard Garfield at that point of time was gaining so much of traction. And so they launched their own Spellfire. So I have my original Spellfire decks and you know this was the set that was supposed to try to take a little bit of that Magic the Gathering pie. And when you look at the cards, there are some similarities between that and the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms deck or set as you see today. TSR was purchased in 1997 by Wizards of the Coast. And finally in 1999, um, Wizards of the Coast was purchased by Hasbro. And that's basically where we are today. Well, I first started my adventures in Fantastical Lands when I was 11 and first introduced to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Years later, at the age of 17, I discovered Magic the Gathering and um, I believe it was 5th Ed at that time and I've got some of my decks over here. Uh, I, I really need to go and dig out those decks. There was Urza Saga and it was quite a while ago but many many years later this, these two properties have finally come together to launch a product that's truly epic in the adventures in the Forgotten Realms. And this is the first ever cross-branded set between Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. The Forgotten Realms is probably the most popular D&D world and it is no surprise that it is the foundation of this collaboration. You get to journey into Faerun by way of uh, Magic the Gathering's mechanics as it merges classic D&D monsters with new lands to explore, treasures to collect and dungeons to delve into. We were sent a set booster box uh, which contains at least one rare or a mythic rare card and a guaranteed foil and art card by Wizards of the Coast. And it's a great and probably the best way to start your adventures in the Forgotten Realms, as in getting this set booster box. It's got a great balance between value as well as the quality and the rarity of cards that you get. Characters from the new set are inspired by well-known Dungeons and Dragons characters and icons including Driss Duerden, you know, the books are right here, and Bruno Battlehammer, as well as others like um, the crime boss, um, the beholder Xanathar, the elder dragon Tiamat, and many, many others. What I do love about this set is that um, it really feels like a collaboration between 
um, Dungeons and Dragons and Magic, and Magic the Gathering. It's not just Magic the Gathering with a Forgotten Realm skin. It's not just a skin. While at the core, it's still Magic the Gathering, the set incorporates elements from Dungeons and Dragons to give it its own unique take and mechanics on the game. While there are a couple of formats that you can play um, Magic, such as Standard and Commander, Adventures in Forgotten Realms uh, also provides D&D-themed mini-games such as Booster Blitz, uh, you've got Roll for Initiative and Magic and Minions that allow you to play the set differently and has its own rules. The cards and mechanics also incorporate the use of a D20 dice, which is core to Dungeons and Dragons. It's very familiar to other tabletop RPG games as well. And prior to this, it was only used in Magic the Gathering um, as a life counter rather than as a game mechanic. And now, uh, results affect spells, decisions, outcomes, very much like Dungeons and Dragons. You can also delve into dungeons such as the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the Tomb of Annihilation, and the Lost Mine of Fendelva. Classic D&D campaigns, and these locations are incorporated into an actual part of the game's mechanic rather than um, just a card to be used like any other. It's now a part of the game, a part of the adventure, a part of the mechanic. Of course, what gets fans really excited is about how their favorite characters are represented in this new set. Now, as a fan of R.A. Salvatore's Driss Duerden series, well, you know, the first thing you would say, you know, everyone's looking for that Tiamat, everyone's looking for Loth, but as a fan of R.A. Salvatore's Driss Duerden, I was ecstatic when I pulled out one of my favorite characters from the booster pack, Bruno Battlehammer. While Driss may be the main protagonist of the series, Bruno is the heart. A true leader of dwarves and men, he's a king that never backs down from a challenge and lifts up his comrades. Always ready for battle, he's never far from the thick of the fight and action with his one-horned helm, his foaming monk shield, and a many-notched axe. And I love the fact that Bruno's card in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms does the red-bearded dwarf king justice. Identified in the books mostly by his gear as much as his inspiring and colorful battle cries, it's fitting that his abilities are built around equipment and buffing other creatures that take to the field with him. Another card that I truly appreciate is Minsk. Beloved Ranger. You may remember Mins from the Baldur's Gate games, Baldur's Gates 1 and 2. He's the goodly, um, albeit simple Ranger. He and Boo, his miniature giant space hamster, you know, they always crack a laugh. But he's always ready to defend his companions, charging into the fray with his, with Boo. You know, Boo never leaves his side. And while no one's ever seen Boo actually fight, actually take it to battle, Mint's Magic the Gathering card gives him the ability to boost another creature, well, ideally Boo, um, for consistency's sake, by turning it into a giant. Finally, we get to see and use Boo in action the way Mint's always imagined in his mind, in-game, and this set truly brings those characters to life. Again, there are several other cards that might jump out to other D&D fans, um, but these are two that really appealed to me because they weren't, they're not, not just about the Forgotten Realms, they are things that came from other aspects of the franchise, the games as well as the books that are now in this set. Magic the Gathering's Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is an amazing set that will appeal to Magic the Gathering fans and especially, I think, Dungeons and Dragons fans who want a quick game and um, have always uh, wanted a short session, but also fans that haven't played Magic and haven't played Dungeons and Dragons. It's a great gateway game. It has a great potential to scale up and 
probably explore new worlds. Dragonlands, maybe? Hmm? Dragonlands? Well, you can now begin your adventures in the Forgotten Realms through set, draft, and theme boosters, commander decks, as well as gift bundles. You know, they, so many options to get you started. Alternatively, before you get this, you can also give it a go online with Magic the Gathering Arena, where you can try to get these cards. So till then, see you in the Forgotten Realms. Thank you for watching another video from Just Saying Asia. Please, uh, if you like our content, like the page, uh, like us, subscribe, and leave a comment. We really want to hear what you have to say, and we'll be happy to answer your comments and your questions as well. So stay tuned, and see you in the next video.